Hello, hello, hello everyone. Welcome back to BSG Online 4. Momentarily, we're going to get started with Crash Bandicoot Insane Trilogy. But before we do, I quickly have two donations I wanted to mention. We got a 50 euro donation <laughs> from Satan TM saying, Good luck with the crash, Dagobert. Uh, XOXO. <laughs> And then we have Kana Angel with a five-year donation saying, let's dance. And with that, the donation incentive for the Crash Dance pinstripe is met. So we will be seeing that in this run. And uh, yeah, I think with that being said, I'm just going to give it over to Dagobert and... Uh, Let's get started. Let's have some fun with Crash. Yes, of course, we're going to have fun with Crash. Hello, everyone. My name is Dagobert, and I am going to be running Crash and Saint Trilogy for you. Uh, the timer is going to start as soon as I hit new game, so I will count down to that in three, two, one, start. All right, so in this category, it's Crash Bandicoot Any Percent, which means I will be running the original Crash game uh, Any Percent. So just to get uh, as fast as possible to the end of the level. Now, to, for a quick recap on the story, we are our favorite marsupial Crash Bandicoot. And we have been experimented on by the evil Dr. Neocortex. And uh, in order to uh, escape him, we flew through a window. Uh, but now he has our girlfriend, so we need to rescue her or just to get back there. We just left. Uh, and to do that, we have to platform through... Uh, about 30 levels as quickly as possible and one thing I'm already gonna explain is the Aqua Aku system uh, I have a cute little mask friend on my face. That's he's called Aku Aku and uh, Some certain crates have his face on it when I collect one of those crates um, I get an power up. It's kind of like a super mushroom in Mario, uh, which gives me an extra hit point uh, I can get two of them at the same time and when I get a third one I get a short burst of invincibility and movement speed um, that invincibility is really important for me to have at certain points because it makes getting through the game uh, a whole lot easier. Um, so right now that's the first level we're going to get in the second level and instantly get another triple Aku Aku Mask. And uh, while we're there, I'll just try and explain what the main strat for this game is. Um, so as you can see, I am going to try to uh, run as fast as possible, but also break as many boxes as possible. Uh, in the first level, you saw that at the end of every stage is a box counting screen. And what that means is uh, the game will count how many boxes I have missed until uh, up, and point that, uh, up until that point. Uh, and for, uh, for, uh, if I miss more boxes, that counting screen will get longer and lose me time. So every box I break is about 0.2 seconds of the timer. So it's quite important to get all of them. Uh, but not enough to get uh, distracted. All right, I'm gonna do a quick collision clip here. There we go. So um, in the original game, uh, <laughs> Naughty Dog had a kind of a weird uh, habit of uh, making random background objects solid, uh, including that pillar. And by jumping on that pillar and over the, the rolling stones, we skip an entire cycle of that stone. Uh, which is about 0.5 seconds save. Um, so that's pretty good. Some pretty quick um, jungle rollers here. And next up is going to be the final level of our little uh, Aku Aku Invincibility Trip. That's going to be the Great Gate. Uh, and that is going to be my point to explain the main thing that is uh, the difficulty in this game. Um, this game is riddled with cycles. And you would imagine a Dutch person would love cycles. Um, I do not <laughs> in this game. Uh, a lot of things in this game are based on cycles and on two different ones. Um, you have local cycles, which are cycles that start as soon as they're loaded in, uh, in relative position to you. And you have global cycles, which just start as soon as the level begins. Most things in this game are based on local cycles, um, but not every. Thing. For example, these spikes are local cycles, but a flaming torch that will be coming up is based on a global cycle. And those cycles can kind of um, mismatch at certain levels. Uh, not that bad. For example, this cycle I cannot get because the cycle starts when I load in. Um, and it's just too fast for me to get over. There is a really small window, but it's, it's near impossible to get. So, so far it's, it's just been running up straight ahead getting as many boxes as we can. Uh, and we have a lot of Aku Akus, unless, but we're gonna lose them because this is our first uh, quote unquote vehicle stage. I'm just gonna call them uh, boulders or vehicles in this game. <laughs> what that means is as you saw, uh, I left the last level with uh, two Aku Akus 
and I enter this one with three or with, with zero, excuse me. Um, certain levels do not like you to have Aku Aku masks and will take them away from you. There are a couple of points in the game where it does that. Um, so you get certain blocks where you need to optimize your Aku Aku strategy. Um, this level is also an auto scroller uh, because the boulder is just running or rolling at a certain pace. Um, but we can speed it up because jumping off of ledges and, and slopes is faster than walking over them. Uh, we can also take the inner part of a turn just to increase our speed a little bit relative to the boulder. Um, and the boulder is going to smash most crates, so I do not have to worry about that one. Uh, and coming up is our first instant of uh, Coyote time. Let me try and get this one. There we go. Okay, so what that is, uh, if it's kind of like Donkey Kong Country's roll. If you spin uh, from a platform, you have a little bit of time where you can still jump. Uh, we're going to abuse that in the next level in the beginning as well. Uh, but that is uh, handy for certain pattern uh, dodges. Um, I'll do another one right at the beginning here. So I'll get this box and move to the right. Let's see if we can get it. Let me know when you have time for a donation, by the way. Yes, uh, you can do that now. I just I hit the cycle, so that's fine. <laughs> you, okay, you have time. We've got a 20 euro donation from TNT Blows Up saying, good luck on the run, Dagobert. Yo. Uh, I know you will smash it. You got this. <laughs> so Thank with you, that, we are, we are only 46 euros away from that 500 mark. So let's see if we can get that hit before the end of the crash run. Ooh, that, that, that sounds interesting. All right. Okay, thank you for the donation as well. That's, that's always good to have. It's going to a good cause, so that's that's amazing. Um, this is the first of two river levels. Um, the river levels are mainly based on two things. It are the those leaves which are cycling back and forth, uh, and those plants. I'm not gonna take this one just to be sure, uh, because the timing on that is really strict, and I need this Aku Aku mask for a later level. Um, so yeah, that's that's pretty clean. I'm glad we hit the cycle. Uh, and coming up next is the first boss of the game. Uh, it's going to be Papu Papu. Um, and if there's a way to describe Papu Papu, I, I think it's old school. <laughs> That's the best way I can describe it. Uh, I'll just let you see it for yourself uh, while talking over it a bit. It's going to be his big tribal man. He's going to smash his staff on the ground and we're just going to stomp over his head. Do that five times and the boss is defeated. Um, the funny thing is... Um, he was actually hard, made harder in this game, and he originally had three hit points, uh, and now they increase it to five, but it doesn't change because um, I was actually able to talk about the boss without being able to finish it in time. Uh, so <laughs> that, that's the first boss of the game. Yes, good boss. Um, fun fact, this is not the easiest boss in the game. Uh <laughs> This is not the easiest boss in the game. I did lose my Aku Aku, so I have to do a bit of improvisation in this part. Um, but will we be fine? So up next is Rolling Stones. And again, it's another one of these rolling levels. Um, one of the uh, levels where getting a triple mask is really important. But sadly, I do not have it, so it's going to be a bit slower. So if you have anything to announce or just talk about, uh, you have a bit of a moment here. Yeah, sure thing. Uh, I quickly just want to mention that you are currently watching the Benelux Speedrunner Gathering. We organize bi-monthly gatherings in the Benelux for speedrunners. Due to the COVID, as due to the situation surrounding COVID-19, we're currently doing our events online for the time being. This event features streamers from both the Benelux and the rest of the world, bringing you entertainment during the lockdown. And if you'd like to uh, be or like to participate in one of our events yourselves, an upcoming event of ours you may be interested in is our yearly BSG Annual. Normally held in Venray in the Netherlands, uh, this year's edition uh, will be either online or on site, depending on the uh, COVID situation. Because of this, exact dates are not yet confirmed, but it'll be around the third week of August. No worries, you can still submit, uh, and in your submission, you can apply for it to be on site, online, or both. Submissions close April 2nd, should be, so be sure to get those in. I'll be dropping a link in chat in just a moment. Yeah, certainly do that. Speedrunning is a great way to spend your time and raise some money for a good cause as well. Uh, what did not went well and what was not good is this level. Uh, I kind of died in the middle, which is unfortunate, but it's not the end of the world. Um, Crash Bandicoot has kind of this, this um, tradition of having Oscar-worthy deaths. 
which mean they take a while <laughs> to perform. Uh, luckily, this wasn't one of the longer ones, so we'll be fine. It's a bit of a time loss, but it's fine. Uh, up next is our next vehicle level. I'm going to try to do a skip, uh, a small one. It's more flashy than practical, but I'll see if I try to get it. It's right at the beginning. Um, if I do not get it, it's, it's not the end of the world. Uh, but again, this level is just jumping a lot, dodging corners or taking corners and just making sure to get over your life. Can I get it? Oh, I did not get it. Okay, I'll just explain what I was trying to do. Um, you see those pillars with the spikes? The top of that pillar is actually solid. Uh, it doesn't have a hurt box, so you can jump on it and get another boost in the air. Um, if you do that at that point, you can just jump over another pillar, which saves no time at all but it looks cool <laughs> and if it looks cool it is cool all right so i'm gonna mix miss this box on purpose uh, and i'm gonna explain why um, as i said earlier in the run it's our goal to collect as many boxes as possible um, but not all of them um, if you smash every box in a level you get a gem and the animation of getting a gem is actually longer than the animation of missing one box so missing one box is optimal. Uh, <laughs> I, it might be a bit of a, a, a bummer for some people who really want to see that completionist going, uh, but we'll see. Uh, and up next is the level I would like to call the mistake. Uh, some sadistical Naughty Dog employee decided in 1996 that uh, one of the hardest and most irritating levels in the game needed to happen right at the beginning. Um, this level is quite infamous in the, the, the community. It's really long, and it's basically two cycles constantly fighting each other. Uh, it are those pillars and those flaming torches. Uh, and they're gonna have a battle of wits uh, until the bitter end. Uh, and they can create some um, funny moments. Some funny moments. Let's leave it at that. <laughs> if if I hmm? Since it is a very long level, when you have a few moments, uh, let me know. Yeah, there is one point where I have like 20 seconds of nothing, where I'm just going to smirk awkwardly into the camera. So if you want to do something with that, go ahead. Uh, it's going to be sure. in a short bit, so I'll sign it over to you. Um, so next up is going to be a bit of a tricky box breaking sequence. We're going to get stuck between two of these. Let's see if we can get it. There we go. That's actually really tricky to do because you need to do a couple of shortened jumps. Um, but we'll get to it and then go up here. Um, up next is going to be the most egregious part. But luckily, these peaceful villagers have built this so you can read something quick if you want to. Okay, let's speed run some donations. We got 20 euros from Triano saying, good luck on the run, Dago. Uh, hoping to see the funny time save in the auto scroller later in the run you have shown me. We have <laughs> 5 euros from YZ. YZ. Wow. Uh, let's go, Dagobert. <laughs> I'm proud of you, man. We got 10 euros from the Warpster saying, Yo, Dagobert, good luck on the run, and I'm looking forward to the crash dance. And with that, we are only 11 euros away from that 500 mark. Damn, you guys are amazing. So much, so many donations during this run. I, I feel honored to to be be the one <laughs> to, to sort of receive them, I guess. But uh, thank you so much for donating. It's going to a very good cause. Um, and you can actually kind of explain what cause we're donating to because up next is kind of a sleeper level uh so if you would explain what we're going for uh i think it will be pretty great yeah no worries we are currently raising money for mind which is a nationwide organization committed to prevent mental health issues and to support everyone who is dealing with mental health issues themselves or within their family all of your donations will go to mind and just as a little statistic here, worldwide, suicide ranks as the third leading cause of death in youth between 15 and 19 years of age, and is the second leading cause of death for girls, uh, girls in this age group. Early recognition of mental health disorders is essential to reduce suicide rates, improve treatability, and reduce severity of several illnesses, including depression, psychosis, eating, and substance dis uh, abuse disorders. MIND tries to help bring awareness by providing classes at school to inform youth on the topic, uh, and through social media campaigns targeting, targeting youth to encourage them to be more open about mental health issues. Yes, thank you very much for that. All right, upcoming next is going to be a small cycle skip. We're just going <laughs> to ignore the the, the, the the leaf coming back and dragging us to that platform. We're just going to do it themselves. Uh, and as I said before, the, the wonderful explanation of the mind uh, is... This is kind of a sleeper level. It's nothing really happening here. 
uh, the one thing that is this part, because um, a thing that Crash 1 likes to do is have multiple enemies of the same type and model do different things. For example, you saw those monkeys rolling around on the, the, the pillars there. Uh, they actually roll back and forth. Meanwhile, the, the same monkeys uh, in those uh, side-scroller levels, on the, the, the Great Gate, for example, they do not roll back and forth. So it's kind of it's kind of trial and error to see what type of enemy you're dealing with. Uh, but most of the time, the difference isn't that big. There's one more obstacle, which will be coming later, that is going to be uh, a more extreme case of that. Uh, but for now... We're just gonna close this one out and move on to our second boss, uh, which is gonna be Ripperoo. Uh, Ripperoo may seem like a, kind of an unchained beast, um, but he's actually the most consistent fight in the game. Uh, he always, always does the same thing, and our goal is to make him jump into certain TNT crates. I am gonna concentrate for a bit, because if the first cycle goes wrong, then this fight is just gonna explode. So <laughs> give me two seconds. All right, fight's over. <laughs> the fight is basically over at this point. For now, I can just hit every one of these triggers uh, and make him jump into it. So he's going to jump there. It's going to be the last. And I'm just going to hide here. That's going to be Ripper Roo. The most important part is getting that first crate because um, that makes sure that he is in the right position for the next crate. He just changes cycles every time he's getting hit, so uh, he is really predictable. Um, but if you kind of mess up in somewhere in those patterns, they get the, the crates are just going to be a nightmare to, to uh, complete. So next up is going to be the Lost City. Um, this is probably the hardest level in the run um, for one important reason, which we'll explain now. Um, I said earlier that uh, you need to collect every box, but not all of them. This level is the one exception to that, and I'll explain why. Um, you have gems in, this, in these uh, kind of games, uh, but you also have colored gems. And they are basically acquired the same way uh, as normal gems, but in Crash 1. And only in Crash 1, you need to complete a level with, uh, with breaking every box without dying once. Um, and I need one of those colored gems because colored gems uh, provide alternative paths for other levels. Uh, what that means in this case is that um, I get to skip an entire level uh, later in the run. Surprise, I, I got that job there. Can I do another donation? Um, in a bit. Yep, no worries. Just give me like five seconds to make this tight jump. Can I get it? I certainly can. There we go. All right, you have time. <laughs> Okay, first off, I just want to announce we just surpassed 500 euros. Yo, let's go. <laughs> we just got 15 euros from Super Jake saying, let's go, funny man, Daho. Mental <laughs> health do be important. I hope everyone has a good time. Well, All thank right. you very much, Super Jake. And thank you, everybody, for helping us reach 500 euros. Oh, man. That's actually insane. Like, you guys are so supportive. I love you guys. What I do not love is this bonus level. So every crash level, ha or most crash levels, have a bonus level, which can be reached by collecting three of those ugly faces in the bottom. Uh, this level has two of them. Um, this one is probably the easier one, despite its looks. Uh, and one uh, thing that is positive about these is I can die in these levels. They do not count towards my death counter in the, the total scheme of things. So I can mess these up. Um, but then I lose a lot of Aku Aku, so it's not the, the most preferred way to go out, <laughs> let's just say that. Um, so right now we're going to make uh, kind of a home stretch, get a few more boxes, dodge these lizards. Um, I want to quickly talk about something that's going to be happening in the other bonus level. Um, this game has a couple of different crates, and the one we're going to be dealing with in a bit is going to be the caged crate. Um, it's kind of like an infinite, uh, it, it, you need to jump on it multiple times to get all of the crates out of them. Um, but it's, it's kind of in the explanation, jumping multiple times on the same thing. It's, it's kind of slow, uh, so we need to break them as fast as possible. There are some strats, um, but it's kind of risky. So I'm just trying to see if we can get it. Alright, that's the ugly part done. Two, three... Four, five, get back. One, two, three, four. And if you um, bounce on them again after 
uh, triggering them once they break instantly. So that's kind of the strat you're going for. Um, that was actually really clean. <laughs> it, it, it is possible with a, a faster strat, uh, but this one is, for me, is the safest. Uh, so now it's, it's kind of the home stretch. Please do not die here. I, I, I've had that happen before. Uh, and that's gonna be the green gem. Really good, really good, really flawless. And that's the most important gem we're gonna get because for the the minute extra we spend in this level, we're gonna skip a level which is like three minutes long. So it's it's uh, a big plus, a big plus. So up next is Temple Ruins. Um, this is uh, the cameraman's worst enemy. <laughs> and I'll explain that in a bit. Um, this level has rising and lowering pillars and that might not sound that bad but uh, due to some interesting camera positions it's not always clear where you are uh, as you can see I'm, I'm pretty sure most people watching got confused <laughs> where I was at that point um, but trust me I, I sort of know what I'm doing um, but those pillars can be really annoying to get uh, right in the first couple of times uh, just because they're 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 they, they're quite weirdly positioned in terms of the camera. So we're just gonna wait here, get a fire out. There's gonna be another kind of uh, optic illusion coming up, but <laughs> it's this part. So just jump ahead, just trust the game. Got another Aku Aku. Make this one just in time. And then continue on, continuing on in this bit. We're gonna wait for this one to rise up. And then walk ahead through them. Uh, that's probably the, the most difficult part of this level done. It's now just a straight hallway to the exit. Um, and while I have the time, I want to talk about one more thing before we get to it. Um, up next is going to be one of the most infamous levels in this game. Um, in Dutch we call it Brug. Uh, <laughs> most people call it Brug who've run this game. Um, and that's going to be the bridge levels. Um, and they're going to be quite tricky. I kind of kind of have to concentrate for them. So uh, if you want to read some donations or something or, or talk about something, you have the time for that. I'm just going to be uh, concentrating on that level. Yeah, for sure. Uh, stay up to date with our events by following us on Twitter and Instagram under the handle BSG Marathon. Get a behind the scenes look at the event and stay up to date with the latest news on our marathons, events and more. We're also in the process of uploading all, our, all of our VODs to our YouTube channel at youtube.com slash BSG Marathon. Be sure to check it out and subscribe to find one new video per day in your feed. Yes. All right. Um, so that's probably the most difficult part or the, the, the most the starter is done. Um, I'm playing this level kind of safe. There is a difficult strat to do, which I'm going to do in the later version of this level. One thing to note is that those pigs you see coming towards me, they are completely invincible to everything except Aku Aku. Um, so you have to dodge them in a place with falling platforms and, and small spaces, which sounds as nice as it is. <laughs> it, it's, it's horrible, but most of the time you can just get them. Just get out of here, dude. No one cares. Uh, I'm gonna lose my Aku Akus anyway. Uh, I'm just gonna no, I'm not gonna play it safe. I'm gonna show you what I'm up to So this is the main strat for the later level um, In this level, it's not kind of worth it to go for it um, I'll explain this later. It may look kind of weird for now. I know but uh, I'll explain as we go on in the second part of this level what that is uh, all about because up next we got another boulder stage uh, and this one also has some kind of interesting things uh, we can do with them. So I was talking about uh, collision uh, in the hog ride level. Uh, this one also has that problem. Uh, problem, uh, funny thing. Um, up, coming up are some um, structures. I'll just call them that. They are just basically planks of wood nailed together. Um, and you can jump on them actually. They are meant to slow you down. But actually you can get some insane heights from them. By just jumping on them. For the rest, it's basically the same as the last level, uh, except this one has some tighter jumps. Um, but hopefully we'll see those banners come up in a second. I think, yeah, here they are. So if I do this, I bounce into them. But if I go up here, I also bounce into them. Do not get it. 
That's sad. We'll just try to focus onto it. But you can jump uh, on them and just completely launch yourself upwards, skipping a lot of the uh, turning. And that saves a bit of time. So for now, we're just in the home stretch for this level. Uh, and we're, we're doing pretty decent. We're doing pretty decent. There's still a bit to go in this level, but for now, it's, it's not the end of the world. Um, there is going to be some more difficult stuff coming up. This is part of the, the, the more easier levels in the game, because once we get to the third island, which will be uh, in a small bit, uh, things are going to get off the rails. Uh, and that's also where you could probably going to see the donation incentive uh, on that island. Uh, but for now, it's just going to be these kinds of jumps. Get to the platform and get safely out of here. Um, so coming up next is going to be a Sunset Vista. Um, and for anyone that has played this game casually, I am sure that I'm triggering some part of your brain that remembers only horrible emotions. Uh, Sunset Vista is by far the longest level in the game. Um, in a casual run, it's about five minutes. Five minutes plus. I'm going to quickly get this one. This is one of the torches we saw earlier. Um, the thing I'm abusing there is that that torch immediately goes on a cycle as soon as I'm loaded in. Um, and because for some reason, despite being the same animation, the spawn animation is a bit faster than the respawn animation. So what that means is that I can dodge that first activation of the cycle when I load into the level, but as soon as I die once, um, I cannot get that cycle anymore. And let's say that that loses around like six to eight seconds. Um, this level is a lot of cycles again. Not all of them are that bad, but the, the part I am most worried about always uh, is going to be a bit later. There are spinning platforms. Uh, and those platforms, <laughs> they do not like to cooperate most of the time. Um, there are different formations of platforms. Most of them are just two platforms spinning with a certain speed. But uh, at one point, they're going to change speeds. They're going to be three platforms in between them. And then those cycles are going to be like a... You, can, you need to imagine like it's being a, it's, it's a grandfather clock. But some of the gears are just rotating in different directions. Uh, they are not cooperating with the rest of the clock, and everybody hates them. Um, but we'll get to them soon. For now, it's fine. Um, I'm going to skip a checkpoint crate up ahead, because by doing that, uh, I can get a more fortunate cycle on this one uh, and not get blocked off by the wall that's just shoving out. Let so, me know when you have time for another donation. Yes, in a bit. In a bit. So I'm going to do this one pretty quick. There we go. That skips the bats there. We can get these three crates, and I'm up here. Uh, and you have time for a donation. We just got 20 euros from Pixel Realm, uh, saying, Ooh. "Hey Dagobert, good luck on the run. Proud of, uh, proud of you for improving so much. Let's get this bread. <laughs> Let's get this bread for sure, for sure. Thanks, Pixel Realm. Yeah, you're gonna have to explain that reference to me okay. since I've not actually ever played Crash. Okay, it's not a Crash reference. Um, I am most involved with the uh, Super Smash Bros. community uh, and there is a certain uh, sentence that is let's get this bread, which basically means let's get it, let's do it. Um, I don't know why it's specifically bread, but it's from the Smash Bros. community. Uh, do not ask me why, just just accept that we're going to get some bread. <laughs> okay. We're going to uh, get some good note, bread. Uh, Ooh, yeah, yeah. On that note, I have another one for when you have time. Uh, I have time right now. <laughs> Okay, we just got five euros from Pablo Bleep uh, saying, Good luck, Dagobert. Go fast. I'm going to try my best, Pablo Bleep. Well, actually, fun that Pablo Bleep is here. Pablo Bleep is actually uh, one of the best Luigi's Mansion speedrunners in the world. So that's cool to have him here. All right. Now it's going to be the part with the uh, grandfather clock that everybody dislikes. I lost all of my Aku Aku masks, so falling down would be kind of detrimental. Um, but we'll see how far we'll go. This should be fine for now. Ugh. And you can already see I just barely made that. Cannot make this one. So I have to wait again. Thank you very much for spinning platforms. We all love you. <laughs> so this is probably the home stretch. Uh, we're going to face the toughest enemy in the game. Which is just is this enemy. Uh, this enemy has killed me before. You have to wait. 
because if you just rush straight through, he's gonna bounce you off and just you fall down at the end of the level, and it's ooh, the mate ooh, it's a funny feeling. Let's just say that <laughs> it's a funny feeling. <laughs> So up next is going to be the uh, next boss. It's going to be Koala Kong, which is actually one of my friends and Reflex's favorite char Crash character. Um, Koala Kong is interesting that he is the only bit of RNG in this game. Uh, most things in this game are super consistent. This guy is not. What you are going to see is me spinning in place while smashing circle uh, stones. And I'll explain what's going to happen. You're going to see those minecarts pop up. Um, these minecarts spawn at random intervals and you can see him get that big boulder he's a big boy he can carry that um, and that boulder we need to launch it back at him um, the problem arises in that the timing for when he throws the boulder is also random so what this bo boss basically boils down to is two random cycles uh, interacting with each other uh, which is whew, it's funny it's a big funny moment and it makes this fight incredibly frustrating sometimes uh, but he seems to be cooperating for now. He seems to be doing fine. So now there's going to be a, a second TNT crate that's going to be spawning. Um, and one thing I forgot to mention is that if I am too late with knocking back the the, 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 the rock. Ooh, this is a bad cycle. Probably not going to get this one. Yeah, if I'm too late with that, uh, it just rolls back and I have to wait another cycle. Uh, that was kind of just crap RNG. I couldn't do anything about that, but we'll see if he likes to cooperate this time. He does! My man Koala Korn. You learned your lesson. So that's going to be the last cycle for now. And another TNT crate. Are you going to cooperate? Please just throw it immediately. Okay, just throw it here. That should be fine. Yes. Thank you. All right, let's go, Alakon. Um, yeah, that's kind of the, the, the war. It kind of went bad, uh, but sometimes, you know, Koalakon just doesn't like me. He doesn't like me. And that's fine. That's fine. We can get over it. All right, so up next is going to be the start of the third island, and this is where stuff gets real. Uh, some of these levels can get uh, really difficult at one point. Uh, the starting levels are not. There's going to be heavy machinery. Uh, I am kind of sad that I didn't get a triple Aku Aku mask here. Um, but I really want that one, but it's fine. It's going to be our first mechanically themed level. Um, and one thing you need to note immediately is that our, there are two different pipes which are coming back in uh, a lot of levels. You have the uh, red ones and the blue ones. You can stand on the blue ones, but the red ones are off limits. And another thing to note about this level in particular is that this level wants to emulate some elevators. We are just gonna skip them. Uh, we do not care for that. It's slow, we do not like slow. Uh, and we can just fall right through them and the game will accept that. Uh, there's two more coming up. Um, that will do that. But they save a bit of time, like maybe one or two seconds. Um, but it, it's most of the time you can just fall right uh, off, uh, or, or uh, below them. And, and be completely fine. I'm gonna wait for this I've cycle. Got, I've, I've got another two donations for you, and I think they're both referencing the same thing. So oh, when you have God. time, I have time. Just get them through. <laughs> okay, we have two euros from Schnee saying, "Let's go Dachau and remember the eye." And then we have ten euros from Paint that just says the eye. <laughs> <laughs> okay, this is a reference which uh, only Dutch people will get. I'm gonna try to explain it in, in English. Uh, okay, basically you have the, as in uh, the car or the house. Um, in Dutch, there are two different variations of that. Um, and one of my dumb jokes that I tried to force is just switching them around. For uh, The best way I can compare it is if you uh, instead said, uh, instead of an egg, you would, you would say uh, a egg. That's the best way I can compare it to. Uh, it's a really dumb inside joke me and my friends have. Uh, I see the chat just filling with die. <laughs> Stop <laughs> it! Yeah, yeah, there is definitely something uh, going on here. Yeah, uh, if for the people that watch this, uh, excuse my friends. <laughs> <laughs>
they like to do this hey, from I time mean, to time. All of the money is going to uh, to great charity. Yeah, so, uh, hey, can't be too mad about that. Yeah. On that note, I do quickly want to mention uh, that right after this run, we have another donation incentive, which is a Bitwarfer Retro, uh, Retro City Rampage for the player's skin choice. So, you know, if you do decide to donate, the current leading choice is only is cloud with only a single euro so Ooh. well i know mario is between them so yeah mario is an option there if you want if, if, if you want my vote get 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 the mario get the plumber in dude <laughs> that's my vote but of course you can donate what you want to but really if you want to support that go donate to that incentive uh and i would love to see that run after this one uh so yeah donate to that one and hopefully we'll get to see some cool characters um I actually didn't get to talk about Cortex Power. It's not that interesting of a level in a speed run. Uh, in the 100% run, this level is an absolute nightmare because of branching paths. Uh, but in this category, it is not. Um, okay, up next is going to be another uh, concentration moment for me. Uh, it's going to be Generator Room. And the thing with Generator Room is that Generator Room is another level with really weird depth perception. And really tight jumps so i need to focus on where my positioning is so if you have anything uh to talk about maybe some upcoming runs you want to shout out you can do that right now well i just want to mention another five euro donation from ultimate giraffe saying hey dagobert love the style with which you talk uh which with which you talk us through the run very informative go funny bandicoot man go <laughs> and then there's hmm, dot uh jiff so <laughs> thank you very much for that donation and yeah, uh, on that note, uh, a little bit later on today, we have two other donation incentives for Yoku's Island Express. There is the ball color uh, choice and there is kill versus save the animals. Both are still at zero euros, so you can decide either of those with a single euro donation. Ooh, that that's, sounds really interesting. Make sure to get onto those. Um, okay, for now, we've got the most egregious stuff out of the way. There's going to be one more cool thing I want to shout out. Uh, we're going to climb some platforms up here, and I'm going to try to get an enemy to uh, snipe these boxes over here. Let's see if I can get it. I did not. Okay, what, what I can usually do with that enemy is I can spin it back into the crates that lie there, like the TNT crate, and just get a couple of extra crates on my run without losing any more time. Uh, sadly, I did not get them. Um, but... Do not be disappointed, because uh, after we have one more level, which is going to be Toxic Waste, after that, we're going to get uh, the donation incentive going on. So uh, I'm already preparing for that, but it's going to be coming up in just a bit. But for now, we're going to get through Toxic Waste. Um, this is another level which, to the blind eye, may seem really difficult, but it's not. Uh, what it is, it's basically just a stretch ahead. Um, but the camera is so far up your back, uh, it's really hard to see what's going on. And then you have these, as one of my friends described, Donkey Kong style enemies throwing barrels down the line uh, and trying to trip you up. You can't actually destroy these with Aku Aku, so I have to jump over them or else I lose speed. Uh, so I have to just plow right through them. And this one may not seem so bad. Um, but coming up in the next one, this not so not this guy. Up next, they're gonna be bouncing on the floor, uh, and that is where the difficulty in depth perception is gonna come in. As you can see, there's the first one, and we're just gonna have to stand here. Yeah, it's 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 difficult to see, but if you know the timings, then it's not not the end of the world. Next up is gonna be another cycle of throwing barrels. Um, I'm actually gonna prepare for a bit. I do have time. Uh, let's see. Yeah, I do have a lot of time for the dance. So uh, allow me to just prepare for a bit while we go to the next level. Chair, I do not need you anymore for now. Get out of here. While you're getting ready, a super quick 10 euros from Bicky Ditch 1234 saying good luck to I. Yeah. Thank you very much. All right, it might seem like this is not gonna work. Uh, I came prepared. I came prepared. Hello. Welcome to the dance cam. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we're just gonna get into the boss. Basically what the donation incentive is, is that um, this boss is a joke. Uh, and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna try to do the crash dance as many times as possible while defeating the boss. Uh, this may cost some time, but we'll see where we'll go. We'll see where we'll go. Uh, as soon as I hit him for the first time, I'm gonna start dancing. <laughs>
Do not care. Do not care. <laughs> okay, got him. We're still fine. Thank you for donating to that incentive. I hate myself, but I love it. <laughs> that was awesome. <laughs> I think I speak for everyone when I say that that was amazing. <laughs> Glad. All right. Uh, that's good because up next are going to be... I think this is the most difficult part of the game for most players. Uh, and that's going to be bridge two and another level. I want to show off a cool skip in the level after this one, so I'm going to try to be kind of slow with this one and catch my breath. Uh, <laughs> but we're going to just walk on the ropes. And one thing I want to explain about these ropes is that these ropes are kind of cursed. They are intentional that I can walk on them, but the collision is triangular, which means I can slide off. Uh, <laughs> that's, that's not good. That's not good. Uh, and it also is kind of finicky for when it decides if you can land on them or not. That's actually really bad, this one. Okay, still got it. So I'm just trying to take this slow, make sure that I do not fall off because I want to keep this mask for the next level uh, because then I can show something cool. Uh, I do not get to keep it for uh, certainly, but um, I can fix that, I can fix that because the part of where the skip takes place, I'm just going to play it safe for now. Um, the part where the skip takes place is uh, near a checkpoint crate. And if you die uh, five or six times near a checkpoint, you get an Ako Ako mask. Uh, and I need that for the, the skip. Um, so for now, we're just going to walk on these ropes. Uh, this should be the end of the level. There we go. Oh, you, you see me sliding off. We got him. We got him. The safe. We in there. But we didn't do, lose that much time. It should be fine. All right, I'm going to quickly make sure my, my fan in the background does not fall over from my chair. Take me back. Um, <laughs> we did not only save time. We also saved the fan. Um, and... The most difficult section in the base game is going to be top off with a slippery climb. This is probably, uh, for a casual player, the worst level in the game. Uh, it's super difficult. There are only two checkpoints in the entire level, so it's really easy to make mistakes and get back all, uh, all the way to the beginning. Um, but for the any percent category, it's not the end of the world. It's, it's kind of doable. Uh, because most of the difficulty in this level, like not dying a lot and making precise jumps is already what, we've, what we have been doing for the most part. So it, it's not that different for us. There is going to be a skip coming up, which I'm just going to show off. Uh, I do have the time, uh, which is going to be the hyper jump. Um, what that is, is that when Crash takes damage, uh, he bounces up a bit. He just gets knocked into the air a bit. Um, but uh, that he just bounces up. Um, the thing is, if we keep getting damaged in one certain position, we can build momentum um, and actually do a pretty cool uh, skip. It's coming up in a bit after I reach this checkpoint crate. I will die a couple of times to make sure I get an Aku Aku mask. Um, like, I have, I've already given up on, on getting a, a really, really, really good time. So <laughs> I'm just going to show what I can do. I can just when show you have up, time, I, I have two more donations for yeah, you. Yeah, go for it. Go for it. Go for it. Okay, we got uh, another 10 euros from Bicky Ditch 1234 saying, Dance, speedrun boy, dance. <laughs> and then we have 5 euros from TNT Blows Up saying, Your dance was so beautiful, I had to donate again. Great run yeah. so far. Uh, great run so far, <laughs> you majestic duck. And remember <laughs> the eye. The eye. Always remember the eye. Okay, one more death when I should get a mask. Uh, I'm gonna. It's gonna be kind of finicky. I got a first try a couple of times in my practice, but I'm going to concentrate for a small bit. Got it. 
Okay, goodbye. Uh, <laughs> what that does is it launches me on top of the level. I'm gonna spin to see where I'm gonna land. Yes, there he is. So now I could just walk all over this um, and not uh, have to deal with all of this stuff. Uh, this stuff, uh, meh, meh, eh. <laughs> We do not wanna like that. <laughs> Uh, it, I don't know. It's, I, I thought it was worth to show off. It's cool. So we can just basically walk to the end of the level like this. Um, the only thing I need to know with that is just nudge back a tiny bit because I can't overshoot it and land behind the level, uh, which kills me, uh, which is not good. <laughs> it's it's pretty bad, actually, if some uh, like some may imagine. So that's actually the end of the level. I'm going to time my drop with the scientist here. Thank you very much, my kind man. And that's the level. <laughs> Mind if I do one more and give an update on the incentives? Yes, go ahead. We got another three euros from Satan TM saying, "Are you going to chart your own dance, Stein?" <laughs> and then, just as a quick uh, update on the incentives, the player skin choice for Retro City right after this is currently set to default with ten euros, then Mario with eight, and then Cloud with one. The uh, ball color choice for Yoku's Island is still at zero, so that is still any incentive, any donation will get that uh, going. And then the cave, the kill versus save the animals is currently 10 euros lead for kill. Ooh, okay, that's quite rude, but <laughs> do whatever you want. All right, I'm gonna explain this level in a really short time, uh, as it may be obvious. Uh, this level's kind of dark. I can't see anything, but luckily my good buddy Aku Aku is here to provide my light source. Uh, and get through it. This level is really easy, but it can spiral out of control because if I get hit, I lose my um, Aku Aku, which also means I lose my light source. Um, that may not sound like the, the, the worst thing, but uh, it's really difficult to see where those cycles of those uh, moving platforms are because they are silent uh, and I cannot hear when they are closing by. Um, so I need that light source and I need to not get hit. Uh, luckily the level is almost over. We're just gonna pass through some swinging axes. We can just jump right over them. Um, one more, well, two more cycles coming up of them. There we go. And that's the home stretch. There we go. So that's actually really clean. Uh, lights out. Only gonna miss three boxes here. They are hidden behind a uh, colored gem path, which we do not have. That that costs a lot of time. We are any percenting, not 100 percenting. Um, so Jaws of Darkness is probably the last uh, real obstacle in the run for now. Uh, it's another one of the cave levels, um, but this one is kind of long. And in the end, there's a bit where you can get another donation in because this level also has the longest crate cat scene in the game. Um, so you have like 20 seconds to just say whatever you want. So I'll say, uh, I'll, I'll, uh, I'll say you, I'll, say, I'll tell you at the end of the level when you can just go off, uh, because sure I have thing. to wait for a long time. Um, yeah, for now, we got one queued up, so good thing too. Okay, good, good. So another one of these these funny optical illusions. Uh, these levels are sometimes magicians, but you know, if you know what you're doing, if you see where your shadow is. Uh, it should be fine. That's like the, the biggest thing that Crash 4 changed. Um, Crash 4 adds like a little circle underneath you to always see where you are. And if I would have had that in this game, it would have made a lot more sense and it would have made some levels a lot easier, but it's fine. We're gonna, gonna get another spinning cycle. Try to get it quick. There we go. It liked me. It did, that did not like me, but that's fine. It should be... I do not need uh, that many Aqua Aqua masks anymore. Okay. Funny. Oh, yeah. You see, I almost got tricked by that one. <laughs> Even I get tricked. The man with the experience of all gets tricked nonetheless. You, you vile beast crash. So, we're nearing the end of level. It's just going to be these floating platforms left. We have one more flame to go and a couple of collapsing um, walls. Hopefully we do not get crushed. That would lose a lot of time. There we go. And you have time for a quick donation. 
All right, we just got five euros from Thompson saying, let's go, streamer. And then there's like five question marks. So <laughs> <laughs> and then uh, he says, love you, Daco. Yeah. Oh, man. Yeah, it's, it, it, that's also like a joke. Like, I almost proclaim, yeah, yeah, I like to stream. And then I don't stream for like three months. <laughs> so, I always refer to myself as streamer question, question, question mark. Um, so, yeah. Okay. Got yeah, any that, that explains that one. No, that, that was the one that I had. <laughs> But I, uh, I, w I want to just thank everybody for uh, being so supportive during this run. It's been, uh, it's been an absolute blast to be here <laughs> as the host as well. So, and and we're getting very close to 600 already. So we've been making uh, very good progress on uh, on the charity as well. Good stuff. Good stuff to all of you. That was actually why we got the gym in the last city. Uh, because I got the gym, I can just walk over there, get some lives, and just get back down there. Um, up next is going to be another boss fight. This is going to be Dr. Nitrius Brio. And in this boss fight, there's also another skip um, in his second phase, uh, which I kind of have to concentrate for. But the first phase is just he's going to throw, throw down these blobs. I have to jump on them, and then he's just going to throw them uh, back in his face. There is a um, glitch where you can speed up his cycles of him shaking the, the flasks. Um, but it's kind of risky to do. Um, so I'll just refrain from doing it for now. He's gonna throw one more cycle of blobs and get really mad. Um, and I'll explain what we're gonna do. Um, Embryo, in his second phase of the fight, is gonna transform in some Hulk-like creature. Um, and that creature is gonna smash the ground uh, and then we can jump on his head by, by jumping on the rubble that falls down. Um, we do not like that plan. We, that takes a lot of time and we do not have the time, so we're gonna make it quick. Let me concentrate for a bit. One, two, here we go. So we jump on his head in the transformation and by walking into him, we can just stay here and constantly hurt him. And that's the boss fight. <laughs> so that's it. Nice. Goodbye, Rio. <laughs> So speaking of that 600, uh, we just passed it. We just oh, got euros <laughs> from Gijsbeer saying, Lekker bezig, Dago. <laughs> and uh, with that, we are now also saving the animals, which has now got a uh, 16 euro lead. Ooh, Gijsbeer with the support for the animals. All right. Um, this is the second last level in the game. Uh, and then there's another boss fight. This level is basically made or break broken by one cycle. Let's see if I can get it. All right, that's cool. If I if I get that cycle there by jumping over them, I can just walk all the way ahead in this level. Um, the gimmick of this level is that are there are these exclamation crates which will interact with certain objects in the level. Um, most of the time they are doors and uh, floors, uh, but you need to tie them in such a way that you can get past them. We're just going to jump over here because we do not like those fingers. Get away from me, scientist man. And up next is going to be the last portion that we can just safely run through. Mr. Scientist is going to throw something at us and that's a checkpoint. Okay, so now it's going to be a bit tricky because now the floor is going to be on a different cycle. Let me time this. So now we get out of there, out of the way. And we get out of this man as well. And again, the floor is going to be uh, a bit of a tricky obstacle in the next one. But luckily, again... Uh, those good people at Naughty Dog and Vicarious Visions uh, fall to add collision to the side of the level, so I can just jump over there. So, there we go. That's gonna be lap. Pretty clean, actually. Not that bad. And coming up next is um, a pretty decent difficulty spike. It's gonna be the Great Hall. Uh, one of the. It's the last level in the game before the final boss fight. So. Uh, I have to concentrate for a bit to get this. So yeah, that's the Great Hall. Uh, it's kind of a difficult level. Uh, the, that one jump is kind of hard to do. Uh, so for now, we're going to enter the last boss fight. And it's going to be against Cortex. Um, time is going to stop as soon as I spin back the final blob to Cortex. And I'll give you a sign what it is. Basically, Cortex, he does not, doesn't like that we get back here. Uh, he's going to shoot at us with his gun. And our point is to send back the green shots, Phantom Ganon style. Um, and his cycles are going to get incre increasingly uh, erratic. Uh, so he's going to shoot those purple blobs. Those are tracked, so they follow your location. The blue ones are going to be cycles. 
and the green ones are always going to be in the same position for you to spin back. Um, he's going to mess with that a lot. Now the blue ones are going to be kind of these wavy um, structures in a bit. Uh, and there's going to be a tricky position coming up so we can get this in one cycle. I actually love this music. This might be my favorite track in the game. There we go. Just passing under that. So now he's really mad. He's going to be shooting an array from bullets. I did not position myself well there. Sorry, I have to do it again. That's kind of the difficult part. Those hitboxes are really tall. So uh, it's not always as easy to jump over them. And it was kind of kind of sloppy with my positioning there. But it's fine. We have the time. I'm well underestimate. So that should be good. And as you see, it's kind of like what, what uh, a lot of bosses in the Kirby games do as well. It's basically the same thing um, as always. And that makes these fights a lot easier to get through. Also, I know I say blobs, but there are ray gun shots. I, <laughs> I know, I know. Do not correct me on that one. It's going to be the first one. So we now need three blobs, uh, three uh, shots to send back. Uh, in the barrage, we only need two. And in the final section, we only need one. You can actually, I think you can fall off the Zeppelin. That's, that's also a, a, a funny thing to discover the hard way. Let's just say it like that. Okay, that's fine. He's gonna just do that again. Okay, time is coming up shortly. So be ready for that. And time. All right. That is not too shabby, actually. That's pretty good. All right. So as a conclusion of the run, I want to shout out the uh, Crash Bandicoot speedrunning community. They have been wonderful people. They've always been very supportive of uh, new people like me in uh, their communities. They also organize a lot of challenges of a lot of different categories in the run. So I would strongly advise you to go and uh, join their Discord. It's pretty easy to find on the speedrun page. And I also want to shout out YYZ for getting me into this game. Uh, and, and just getting me into speedrunning in general. Uh, and of course, I want to shout out BSG for uh, inviting me and being wonderful. Uh, I re I'm really nervous to, <laughs> to be here. I was really nervous. I, I, I didn't sleep that long, but I'm really glad that I got invited for this run. And uh, I hope you guys enjoyed it. Yeah, thank you for joining us. It has absolutely been a blast to watch the uh, crash run. Um, a few th quick things before we want to uh, before we go off. First and foremost, if you liked what you saw here, be sure to go follow Dagobert at twitch.tv slash om underscore Dagobert. Um, and with that, I think we are going to go into a quick intermission soon while we get set up for the uh, city... Red, I always forget. Uh, Retro, Retro City Rampage. Retro City Thank Rampage. Thank you. I, I'm, <laughs> I, I always forget the name of the game. Uh, but yeah, we're going to go uh, into an intermission and then we'll have some Retro City Rampage. The player skin choice is still open. Uh, that'll be open for, I imagine, not much longer. So if you want to donate for that, be sure to get them in quick. Uh, that'll also be it for me. Uh, I'll be leaving you off to the next host, which uh, I believe is going to be Thextera. So thank you guys for joining us and um, stay tuned.